Hi. TrigSec1 from Tenderfoot Electronics is our new probability influence trigger sequencer module. The base 12 HP module gives you four channels of up to 16 steps, and the included 6 HP expander module adds an additional four channels to this. The step pattern for each channel is programmed by holding the corresponding channel button whilst rotating and clicking the encoder to either add or to remove a step. To quickly program a string of triggers, we can hold down the button, hold down the encoder, and rotate it at the same time. And it's exactly the same to remove them. Once you release the channel button, the LED display will switch back to show the current master set progression. TrigSec1 requires an external clock source, and in this patch we're going to send it a trigger from the CLK module. So here we can see the master step position progressing through all 16 steps. Now this is currently an empty pattern. So first let's patch some drums into channels one, two, three, and four. So one is our kick, two is our snare, three is our closed hi-hat, and four is the open hi-hat. Now with the clock going and no channel buttons held down, you can see the current step progression. As we hold down channel one button, let's po program in a kick pattern. Let's do the same with channel two and the snare. And now some hi-hats. Let's have loads of closed hi-hats. and the open hi-hat. One of the main features of TrigSec1 are the probability controls down the right. These allow you to add chance to the pattern in a number of ways. The positive dial sets the probability that one of the active steps for the current channel will occur. So if we hold down the channel 3 button, which is the closed hi-hat, we can see that every step is an active step. If we turn this down to all the way to zero at first, it's essentially going to mute the whole channel because there's zero chance that any of those will occur. As we slowly increase the positive chance, you'll hear more and more triggers firing. And once we're up to 100%, every trigger will fire if it's been programmed in. To make that a bit clearer, let's just mute the other channels and go through that again. So here we only have channel 3 playing. And let's take it down to 0% and slowly increase the positive chance. And there's 100% and let's bring the other channels back. The negative dial works in a very similar way, but it sets the probability that an empty step will actually produce a trigger. So if you don't want any unexpected triggers, set this to zero for every channel. But if we add some extra negative probability to, let's do channel one, we can see what that does to the pattern. So channel one is the kick. And now there's some extra kicks thrown in there, just for a bit of variation. And again, let's mute the other channels just to see how it sounds. So if we take that back down to zero for the negative, and let's slowly add some more kicks. And if we take it up to 100%, you'll see that we get a kick on every single step because now all of the, the blank LEDs have essentially been turned on. And let's take it back to zero and let's bring all the other channels back.
The ratchet probability is a little more complex, and when a channel button is held in, this will set the likelihood of that channel firing multiple triggers for one of the positively programmed steps. To set the number of ratchets, as standard, there's a global control of this when we rotate the ratchet dial without any of the buttons pressed in. The numbers around the dial show the number of ratchets. There is a way to set each channel individually and we'll cover this later. So right now, let's, let's mute all the channels except for the closed hi-hat. And let's add a little bit of ratcheting probability. And if we take it all the way up to 100%, you'll hear that there's a ratchet on every step. So let's set it to about 30%. And using the global control, um, by turning the dial with none of the buttons pressed in, we can choose the number of ratchets. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. And just to make this a bit clearer, let's put the ratchet probability all the way up to 100%. And let's set it at something sensible like that and bring the other channels back in. In addition to the probability dials, we also have a swing control that we can use if we want to add a little swing to the pattern. Adding swing also adjusts the ratchet timing just to make it fit with the new rhythm. TrigSec 1 comes with 16 save slots that can be accessed during a performance by pressing buttons 1 and 2 to save and 3 and 4 to load. The display will show all 16 LEDs lit and these represent the save slots. So let's load one of the pre-save patterns. Let's go to pattern number 1. And here you'll see that we've got some other cables patched into the expander and those are triggering two different voices. Now while this is playing, we can load another pattern. So let's go to pattern two. And back to panel one. Now also on the panel, we have the fill, fill button just here. When we press this, we enter fill mode, which is indicated by the pink indicator light. While in fill mode, we cannot edit the step sequences or save or load, but we can still adjust the probabilities, this time for multiple channels if we hold multiple buttons. Holding down one or more of the channel buttons while in fill mode will fire triggers from that channel in time with the sequence. The speed of the fill can be adjusted by rotating the ratchet tile whilst pressing in one of the channel buttons.
This will also alter the number of ratchets for that channel, and is the way in which we can program separate ratchet speeds for each channel. The final feature we'll look at is the live record mode, which is accessed by holding the fill button until the light flashes. This allows you to tap in a sequence as it's running. While in this mode, if you hold down one of the channel buttons, it will enter a string of triggers as well. I hope you enjoyed this look at the TrigSec 1, which will be available very soon. For more information, check out our website and dealers at www.tenderfootelectronics.com. And if you have any questions, then feel free to get in touch with us. Thanks.